OK, welcome, everyone, to today's Google Webmaster Central Office Hours Hangouts. My name is John Mueller. I'm a Webmaster Trends Analyst here at Google in Switzerland. And I try to connect our engineers together with webmasters, publishers, SEOs, like all of you guys. Um, we have a bunch of questions submitted, some of them through one side, some of them through another side. So um, maybe if one of you guys wants to get started first, and then I'll try to find the best side to get pick some questions out from. Uh, hey, John, could I, uh, could I ask you a question? Sure. OK, uh, a couple of Hangouts ago, uh, I talked about a client of mine uh, that I've had for over a year and a half. Uh, I've had problems with uh, him performing on uh, organic results despite disavowing bad links, um, uh, doing uh, a new website basically, doing some nice uh, content marketing campaigns which we attracted quality links. Uh, there's been no performance benefit for the last, last year and a half. Uh, I've also made a, a product forums uh, thread which I explain everything. And uh, we still couldn't get to the, with the people I talked there, we still couldn't get to a, a solution, I guess. Uh, I also sent you a message on Google Plus. I don't know if you got that. Uh, just curious. I could uh, send you the thread. Uh, yeah, if you, if you could post the URL of the thread in the chat, I can double check there. OK, uh, there you go. But sometimes um, these things just take a long time to get processed. So that's something where sometimes it just needs a, a longer time to continue working on this. But I, I can double check. Right. I was just curious if there's you know anywhere I should look more closely, anywhere we should direct our efforts, or if this is just uh, you know we're not. I hope it's not the answer that we're not quality material enough because our competitors aren't. Um, of course, this is a non-English uh, website we're talking about, so it's a, it's a local market. And uh, I understand that things might be uh, moving more slowly, I guess, because there are less people talking the language, I guess, at, uh, rather than the English markets. Uh, but yeah, any information that could help me you know, understand uh, where we should focus our efforts uh, better, obviously, uh, the client is not that happy that other websites are using non, uh, well, black hat tactics, let's just call them that, and uh, are succeeding. And uh, we're using, uh, uh, trying to use branding and marketing campaigns and not doing anything. Mm -hmm. You said you cleaned up a bunch of links as well? Yes. And how did you clean them up? Did you go through the disavow file? or did First you of all, we, we, uh, we uh, so, uh, the client was, uh, we took the client about a year and a half ago. First of all, uh, we tried to find emails for all the directories and everything that uh, contact emails, I mean, for, uh, that he had uh, uh, links from. Uh, we emailed that. We got a bunch of links actually removed, so uh, uh, removed from the websites. Uh, the others, we just used the disavow file. Uh, we also updated the disavow file recently. We also included sites that are 404 now or 500 errors because we don't know, maybe they'll come back and I don't know if that's going to influence or not. So just to be safe, we put them there as well. Uh, the website was redesigned and remade using a different CMS because the old website wasn't really uh, Google friendly. So now we're using PrestaShop to, to, uh, as the main CMS. And uh, yeah, as I said, we, we went with a bunch of uh, 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 content guides for our users that we uh, promoted and uh, actually got some, uh, some pretty nice links. But uh, we, we, we haven't seen any effect. In the link I gave you uh, in the chat, I actually do a, a more in-depth analysis mm -hmm. and our competitors' analysis. And I hope that can uh, help you with uh, yeah. more details. I'll take a look at the, the thread. But in general, it sounds like you've made a lot of changes. Mm -hmm. And uh, anytime you make this many changes, things are going to take a, quite a bit of time to kind of settle down again. So on the one hand, I still see some issues with regards to the links that, that the algorithms are picking up on, which mm -hmm. might just be a matter of things still taking time. Okay. Um, but uh, that's something where I Double check to make sure that you're really covering everything there as much as you can. And make sure that things are 
essentially as good as they can be so that the next update of the algorithms kind of picks up on the positive changes there. So that's something that shouldn't be slower in, in other languages in other countries. So it's not something I'd kind of move, move in that direction or excuse like that. It's really just our algorithms taking the time to kind of refresh all of this data. And some of that takes, takes quite a bit of time. I, I wish we could do some of these a little bit faster, but uh, it, it just takes time. And I think. To some extent, you're probably on the right track there. Uh, sometimes it makes sense to set up a separate site and say, OK, I understand that this website isn't doing so well. I did a lot of spammy stuff with this site, or the previous SEOs did. Maybe it's worth just setting up a separate site and moving to, to something different like that. But I think you're kind of on the right track there with that site. So Personally, I wouldn't uh, say try to like kind of, kind of like walk around the problem like that, but uh, continue to kind of work in that direction. Right. Uh, the, the, well, the client is pretty attached to the domain because yeah. it's, it's ran, so it's kind of difficult to move from that. And we've made every effort possible to try to uh, remove ourselves from anything bad uh, uh, the other uh, SEO before us did, but. Uh, yeah, we were just looking for a bit of signals. Uh, this, uh, uh, I hope I'm not taking too much time. Uh, this would lead me to a second question. We also tried to, I was talking about the language being different, uh, not in the algorithmic point of view that you made, because I understand that uh, updates like Penguin and Panda are pretty language independent, pretty much. Uh, but from a, from a manual action point of view, because many of our competitors, from what we've seen, uh, uh, kind of abuse advertorials. And uh, from what I understand, advertorials are uh, subject to manual actions more or less because it requires a manual review of the websites to determine if the link is, if the article is an advertorial or an editorial content. And from that point of view, I think there is a, a bit of a language barrier. I think in, a, in, in the English language, it's much easier to maybe even uh, algorithmically detect and uh, or flag, at least flag, uh, uh, an article for manual review later by an actual person, rather yeah. than in other languages. It's it's tricky. I mean, if this is something that you think we're totally missing out on, then sending me that information would be a great idea. Uh, doing spam reports is something you could uh, you could do as well. Um, I. I don't think this is something from an algorithmic point of view where we'd say algorithmically we have to recognize this problem and then do a manual review. It's more something where we decide to do a manual review and then we'll do a manual review. And we should be able to pick up on signals like that, like advertorials, because these are um, native speakers that do these kind of spam reviews. So it's not someone who only understands English looking at a page that they don't understand. It's really a native speaker who should be able to recognize when something is an advertorial or when it's actually normal organic content. Uh, yes, but the native speakers uh, get a signal from somewhere to look at the website, right? I mean, from spam reports or maybe yeah. some flags. And regarding spam reports, uh, you know, in the spam report, you have website that is selling links, website that is buying links, and commentaries. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I have a, a, a website that I know is doing a bunch of spammy tactics and has a bunch of spammy links. Should I submit a report for every spammy link, or could I just send a single report? And uh, uh, I would want, I'd like to give you an example. For example, I, I, I took one of the websites uh, that I found is uh, quite abusing advertorials, and uh, I made a Google Sheet with uh, with everything I found mm -hmm. regarding the uh, spammy links, and I submitted it as the the URL of the site that's selling the links, rather just than just. I don't know if that's a good way. Uh, for example, you could. That's take probably confusing for the team there, but I think in a case like that where you have a complicated case that you essentially want to get to reviewers, that's something that's probably best sent directly to one of us. So that we can take that whole email and with the link to your document and pass that on to the web spam team instead of trying to kind of fit, 
fix it into a form that's not really that suited for something complicated like that. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I, I sent you the link to the, the the spreadsheet in the in the chat. I don't know. Okay. I, I hope it's detailed enough. And let me know if there's any way I can do. Th if this is a good way to do this uh, for the other websites that I find or anything like that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, there's a question in the chat about I don't know penguin. Uh, regarding whether or not the rollout is complete. And to be honest, I don't really know. So I was out uh, at SMX Milano last week and uh, kind of busy on the weekend, so I didn't really catch up on, on what exactly is happening there. I imagine it's, it's probably about rolled out now, but I don't have any absolute information. Sorry. OK, thank you. Can I ask one question? Um, not related to the Penguin? All right. So you know how Google started to fully render a page as a user would see it? Yes. So I've seen reports that when you have, like, on the website, click to expand to show more content, that since that Google's ignoring the content in that click to expand because the user doesn't see it unless they click to expand. Is that an implementation problem, or is that, is that something new with fully render? I think to some extent we've doing that, been doing that for quite a while now. So I, I saw your blog post about that, and I sent uh, the team that works on this in a short email before the Hangout, but I didn't hear back on from them on time to actually have a definitive answer for you there. But I think we've been doing something similar for quite a while now, where if we can recognize that the content is actually hidden, then we'll just try to discount it in a little bit so that uh, we, we kind of see that it's still there, but the user doesn't see it. Therefore, it's probably not something that's critical for this page. So that includes like the click to expand. That includes the tab UIs, where you have all kinds of content hidden away in tabs, those kind of things. So if you want that content really indexed, I'd make sure it's visible for the users when they go the, to that page. Uh, from our point of view, it's always a tricky problem when we send the user to a page where we know this content is actually hidden, because the user will see perhaps the content in the snippet. They'll click through the page and say, well, I don't see what this information is on this page. I feel kind of like almost misled to, to click on this to actually get in there. So that's kind of the problem that we're seeing. And some of that, um, I think we've been picking up on that for quite some time now to kind of discount that information. It might be that we've gone a little bit further now to actively kind of ignore the information that's not directly visible. Okay. But John, is there, is there not a better way to deal with that, John? As we've spoken about previously, you, you don't let us know what the keywords are coming to our website. And if we did, we wouldn't have to choose design over development uh, for, for, uh, for Google. You know, we could say, OK, those are the keywords. Let's show the panel that we want to be able to show to our customers and potentially even use jQuery to scroll them down to the exact area. But we're unable to do that because you hide our keywords. So. Um, I know there's abusers, but you can't really remove something just because people abuse something. you are got to find a better way around of doing it. I don't really think that's going to change. I, I understand that concern. I know that some people were using it for, for good reasons. And what you're saying there, I think that makes, makes a lot of sense. But uh, I don't see that coming back. So that's kind of the keyword data is visible in Webmaster Tools now. You don't see it directly on, on the sessions when, when people are active. So I think that's something you'll kind of have to work with that. That's, uh, I guess, a little bit of a different constraint that, that's happened over the years, where maybe it makes sense to try to recognize, uh, based on the Webmaster Tools data, what people are searching for, where you should have specific pages, where you want to kind of have more general pages, and, and work that out. But I don't see that uh, refer data coming back to the request from search. Maybe maybe it could come back for people that have some kind of trust level. I don't see that happening. Sorry. <laughs> Thanks, John. All right, let me grab some uh, from the Q&A. And Barry, I'll, g I'll get back to you on the, the click to expand stuff to see if we have something more specific that I can tell you. Yeah, thank you. Just post it on the Google Plus, I guess. Sorry. Great. Hey, John, why not use something like Linkrel for the click to expand thing so that you guys have the ability to send the users to the page uh, with a particular section expanded? Um, I don't know. 
<laughs> I, I'd have but, to look at that. I, I know we sometimes use the, the anchors when we rec can recognize that a page has specific sections on it where we can send mm -hmm. them directly to that section. But I know that's a very tricky problem because lots of pages use that for very different means. So some of them use them for JavaScript navigation. Uh, some of them use it for navigating with, within the page. And not all elements on the page are equally relevant. Or sometimes the, the design makes it really hard to figure out which kind of anchor goes to which part of the content. Right. Yeah, maybe something like uh, the previous and next page navigation, and you know we can give a, a page number essentially to each tab. Yeah, but I, I guess at that point you might as well just create a separate page with a separate URL, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, but at okay. least you would know that it's part of the same page. It's not a separate page uh, from a link perspective. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I have to think about that, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's go through some of the Q&A things. It seems some people were able to make it through to the Q&A feature. So let me just grab some of those quickly. Uh, the number of daily crawl pages in Webmaster Tools is a couple times higher than websites that has subpages. Why is that bad? Um, I'm actually not really sure what you mean there, Lukash. Um, but essentially, the number of crawled pages um, depend mostly on the server capabilities as we can find them, kind of like as an upper limit. If we can recognize that we can crawl this many pages from your website and we have that many pages that we want to look at, we'll try to crawl that many pages. Uh, another factor is the number of URLs that we find on your website. So if you have a, a very clean URL structure, you might have a lot of pages, but they're very like unique URLs, so we don't crawl a lot of duplication. On the other hand, if you have complicated URL structure, then we might find 10 times as many URLs as you actually have, or 100 times, and we'll try to crawl all of those versions if we have a chance. So those are kind of the two sides that I'd be looking at there. Uh, one thing I would do in your case is look at your server logs, find out which URLs we're actually crawling, and make sure that those are actually URLs that you want to have crawled. And if that's the case, then the crawling a lot of pages is probably a good thing. We're keeping up with all of the changes on your website. If you recognize that we're crawling a lot of URLs that you don't want to have crawled, then I'd kind of take those sample URLs and go back and look at your website and see where they came from and maybe what you can do to prevent those links from actually being like that on your website. And do you or any Googlers can share with us some tips and hints regarding Webmaster Tools for better diagnosis, improving and interpreting data, or recommend uh, someone with that information? Uh, we want to see SQT tools case study if this is possible for better understanding of common problems. Uh, that's good feedback, good idea. I can see if I can find actually maybe someone from the Webmaster Tools team to join one of these Hangouts, and we can ask him all of these tough questions directly. And maybe he can show us some information on what, what we're looking at. So that might be an interesting idea. Uh, notice how you used your magic tool during Hangouts to help identify problems. I'm wondering if you would consider doing a special Hangout to help webmasters to identify existing problems with their websites. Uh, yes, we, we've done a few of these site clinic type Hangouts before. I think we can definitely do one again. Uh, why not? Um, do no follow links. Um, I think the nofollow links pass some signal for some algorithms. Uh, essentially, we see these as links on the pages, but we don't pass page rank for them, and we don't pass any uh, any of our signals through nofollow links. So essentially, these are links that we know exist on your page. We'll show them in Webmaster Tools, but we don't pass page rank. It's not that you can kind of get a, anything like that from, from those links. So we might. Uh, crawl those links anyway, because maybe we'll find another version of those links as well, uh, just to also make sure that we're not missing any relevant content on your site. So it's not a block like a robots.txt, 
But on the other hand, it doesn't pass PageRank, so it's not going to make this this page anything really strong in search. Because if we can't forward any PageRank or any other signals to those pages, they they might be indexed because we've seen them before. But usually, they're not very relevant in search. Uh, John, can I ask a, a follow-up question on that? Sure. Uh, uh, so, uh, do you use the nofollow links? At all for like I don't know. So not, you're not using them for passing page rank, but do you use for like determining or better understanding the relevancy of a page based on I don't know where the nofollow link is coming from or something like that. So do you use any signals at all for uh, determining how relevant or anything about the target page? I don't think we use any any signals at all from there. I I can't say absolutely, but uh, at least from the parts I've seen, I I don't think we use any any of the information that's kind of passed from that link. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, does Google respect incorrectly formatted canonical tags? Um, and then there's an example with like a broken HTML link rel canonical. Uh, if we can parse that that tag, we'll try to take it into account. If we can't parse it, then we can't take it into account. And we're pretty much used to broken HTML, so for a lot of things, we can recognize kind of the the information in there. Um, but if you know that you have broken HTML, especially with regards to something like a canonical tag, a no index, any kind of really directives that you want Google to follow, then I definitely work to fix that. Uh, it's possible we'll be able to pick it up correctly, but it's not absolutely guaranteed. Uh, John, uh, Rob messaged me. Uh, he couldn't get into the Hangout, and he was wondering, he sent you a message last week regarding this sort of secretive thing you might be able to tell him about what's wrong with his site, and he was kind of hoping that he would have heard from you. Um, yeah, I saw that, but I don't have any anything new to, to add at the moment for his site. So, yeah, yeah. He he was wondering if um, the penalty was um, if the algorithm was rerun, would his site just be functioning as normal again? Um, I don't know. Or is he not Perhaps. in the woods with? Perhaps. Yeah. Okay. I mean, as, as normal, again, is always hard because things change over the years. And uh, when, when, for example, you get a manual action in the beginning of the year and at the end of the year that manual action is lifted, doesn't mean it'll be exactly the same as it was before. So everything kind of evolved over that time. I think what he meant was would he be on a level playing field with other people in sure. order to be able to compete? Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's that's definitely ca the case that when these things expire, when they get resolved, uh, there's no, um, I don't know, how do you say, grunge that, that Google's algorithms have yeah. and say this, this site was bad in the past, therefore we'll be uh, kind of more cautious with this site. That's not the case. Yeah, cool. He says thanks. Great. All right. Uh, let's grab some from the other moderator page, if I can that up. All right. Um, how do you treat a subdomain for hreflang? For example, www.domain.com, 302 redirects to a territory like slash UK. Um, we essentially treat that as a normal page. What I would do here is take the main page that you have here that uh, does a geographic redirect and call it the X default page so that we know this page exists and that you essentially want this page to be shown for any cases that you don't have specifically covered. And when you do the hreflang, make sure that you're doing that between the canonical versions of these URLs. So uh, if you have a slash UK and a slash UK with an extra slash at the end, then make sure you're doing it between the versions that you have set up as a rel canonical. So in this case, I would call the main, like the root URL, the X default, and use the slash UK slash version as the UK specific one. Uh, is Google still working on an automated penalty viewer so we can see what algorithms aren't happy with our site? 
Uh, this is a popular request, and we do discuss this regularly with uh, the engineering teams and also with uh, the, the ranking teams to see what we can do there. At the moment, I don't have anything specific that I can announce. I think it would be great to have more transparency like that in Webmaster Tools. Uh, it's a very tough problem, though, so it's not something that I would expect any, anything specific on in the near future. But uh, as always, keep pushing. If this is something that you really would love to see, keep letting us know about these things so that we can also keep talking to the engineers and kind of pass that feedback on. Uh, our content is changing steadily. As a consequence, we need to add and remove pages. Is it better to use the old URL for new content? Um, you can do it either way. I don't think there's anything, any inherent advantage or disadvantage of using old URLs for new content. So personally, I imagine it's easier from a maintenance point of view to just use new URLs. But uh, if you can't do that, or if you want to reuse old URLs, that's essentially fine, too. As uh, Googlebot recently rendered pages as users would see it, uh, this is Barry's question. Um, I, I'll get back to you on that, Barry, is when I have more information. Uh, has the Bank Penguin update been completed? We talked about this briefly as well. Are you tired of Penguin questions? Um, it's, it's interesting that uh, when I went to SMX Milan, I didn't get any Penguin questions at all. So I don't know if there are a different group of webmasters that go to SMX Milan or not, but uh, I found it interesting that the type of questions were very different. And it might just be that Italian webmasters are so advanced that they don't worry about these things. Don, can I ask you <laughs> one, one quick remaining question, though? Sure. Do you, do you know if Penguin is a monthly rolling update now? And or do you know more or less if it's going to be short term or long term for it to be refreshed? Um, I think the general goal is to have this be refreshed faster. I don't know if there's any specific time frame in mind. So the, I imagine it'll just be faster than the existing kind of update cycles, which I think was extremely long. But uh, I don't know how fast we'll be able to move it. And I imagine over time, as we see how we can update it faster, we'll be able to speed things up so that it kind of makes a little bit more sense in that regard. So I don't have any specific announcement to say it'll be monthly or it'll be quarterly. But I know the team is working on making it a little bit faster. OK, so can we expect another announcement then if it's not going to be rolling monthly? Um, probably. I don't know. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that Barry will pick up on it and will ask us, and we'll either say something or we won't say something. I, I'm sure people will know. So I don't think it will like sneak by silently. And I mean, the idea behind these updates is so that people see changes, those who worked on it to improve things, see positive changes, and uh, those who have been doing sneaky things, uh, kind of the web spam issues that we pick up on there, that they see negative changes. So this is something where if we do an update and nobody sees any changes, then that's almost like not doing an update. So you should kind of see changes over time. Perfect. Um, Thank you. John, can I step in with a question about the panda, as you're tired about penguin? <laughs> I didn't say that, but go ahead. OK. Uh, you know, recently, Barry's website, SEO Roundtable, has been hit by panda 4.1. So I was wondering if he should change his website domain name, or how should he recover faster? I don't know. I haven't looked into his site on that regard. So I don't know. It's hard to say. OK, I've pasted it in the chat of the, okay. uh, from the last uh, of his blog posts. OK. I didn't realize that, but OK. Good. I mean, not good, but yeah. Yeah, maybe. Thanks <laughs> for the link. Yeah. <laughs> A recovery method, a faster recovery method. OK. Um, for the mobile version, we need to prune some H1 titles and change some anchor text. How does Google handle this case? Is that allowed? Uh, from our, our point of view, essentially the 
primary content should be equivalent in the mobile version. So sometimes it makes sense to uh, kind of hide things like uh, sidebars, headings, change the menu structure around a little bit, uh, kind of simplify images or remove images, those kind of things. But the primary content of each page should essentially be equivalent. And that can include things like changing titles. It can include things like changing the text slightly, slip, simplifying the text. All of that is, is absolutely fine. But really, the primary content should be equivalent. Uh, question about links to your site and Webmaster Tools. Some very good and natural links disappeared, and some low-quality links are listed, uh, regardless that they're disavowed. Is this a problem in Webmaster Tools? Uh, so Webmaster Tools tries to reflect the data as we technically find it on the web. It doesn't take into account the disavow file. It doesn't take into account nofollow or not nofollow. Essentially, these are just the links that we found on the web. So that's something where you should be seeing links that are disavowed. You should still be seeing links that are nofollow. All of those links should still be there. If uh, normal links disappear there, then that seems more like a technical problem, uh, either on the linking side or on the receiving side. So maybe the page that's being linked to is a 404 or something like that. But uh, sometimes these things also just happen with normal fluctuations. Uh, some things go up, some things go down. Sometimes we kind of pick up on changes quickly. Sometimes things kind of like take a while to settle down a little bit. So uh, from that point of view, I wouldn't panic about this. Um, if you see that these kind of links are gone for a longer time, then by all means post in the forum. Uh, maybe include a screenshot, some example URLs that we can take a look at. Uh, have we learned any causes for some sites uh, take a ranking hit after switching to HTTPS? Uh, we've looked into a lot of sites that moved. And for the most part, that move works completely as expected. Um, we've also seen some, some issues on our side, which uh, we've been able to kind of resolve as well. So in general, you shouldn't be seeing any problems there. If you still are seeing problems with a move like that, uh, by all means, uh, just send me some examples. Um, I visited a few of your Hangouts. The so last one, you take a look at my individual situation. Uh, what's the best way to get in direct touch with you since you don't respond on Google Plus? I get a lot of requests on Google Plus, but uh, usually that's the best place to kind of get in touch with me. And if you notice that I've kind of uh, forgotten to reply to your post there, by all means, feel free to add a follow up there. Uh, just using hreflang tagging and just a sitemap, is that acceptable? Uh, for example, if I omit the hreflang tag on the page, Yes, the sitemap is essentially equivalent to having the markup on the page. Uh, about this about links, you said the algorithm sometimes treats them as similar to not followed, when and how. Uh, in general, we try to treat them as uh, being the same as no followed links. So that's something where we kind of reserve the right to recognize particularly problematic situations and take action if we think that that's absolutely necessary. I'm not aware of any of those situations. So to for the most part, you can assume that they're just treated as no follow links. Um, considering the comments of Garing you, does it take more than two weeks to process reflected data for large algorithm updates? Yes, definitely. So this is something where, depending on the URL, sometimes we crawl them daily. Sometimes we crawl them every couple of months. So if you submit a large disavow file or a disavow file that includes a lot of domain entries uh, or just generally includes a lot of different URLs, then that's something that's going to take quite a bit of time to kind of recrawl all of those URLs naturally and reprocess all of that information. So I wouldn't be surprised if you're looking at a time frame of maybe three to six to nine months even for disavow files to be completely taken into account. And that's not something that happens from one day to the next. This is a, a granular process that happens step by step. So as individual URLs are recrawled, we see them in the disavow file. That'll be taken into account. 
So it's not that you have to wait this long for them to be reflected. It's just that for everything to be recrawled and reprocessed, it can take a significant amount of time. Uh, canonicals and hreflang tags. If the hreflang sitemap is OK, what's the effect of having canonicals at the URL level in parallel? Uh, is there conflict or confusing message for the bot? Uh, so essentially, when combining canonicals with hreflang tags, you should make sure that the canonicals point at the individual language or region versions. And the hreflang tags are between the canonical versions that you specify. So don't pick one language version as a canonical and have all of the different ones in hreflang, but instead have each individual language version have its own canonical. So you have one canonical for English, one canonical for French, and between those canonical URLs, you have the hreflang markup. So that's essentially how you would use a rel canonical together with hreflang there. So John, just to clarify, the canonical tag on slash en would be cyclical to slash en, and the canonical tag on slash fr would be cyclical to slash fr? Yes, exactly. OK, so you should not be canonicaling from xyz.com to en, because that is going to canonical, that's going to tell Google that the en is the canonical. Yes, exactly. And okay. this is the confusion. People get really confused over this. Yeah. it's. Something where I think in the beginning we didn't have absolutely clear guidelines on that, so some of the confusion is also our fault. But uh, I think in general you can look at it this way that if you have the canonical tag there, then we kind of ignore the non-canonical URL. So if you point your canonicals to the English version and you have a French version there as well, then we kind of forget about the French version and just focus on the English version. And that's probably not what you're trying to do. You want them essentially to be equivalent, to be indexed individually. OK. Here's another issue people have with canonicals, if people don't mind me asking this question. So sometimes um, they'll try and change their, their uh, a page on their site, and Google doesn't seem to want to allow you to canonical a non-standard index page, for example, or a non-standard page that has like a URL parameter or something like that. Is there any way around that? Um, not because really. For example, some people are using URL parameters to dictate certain uh, things they would render on the page, and they're trying to set that as canonical. Mm -hmm. But That's... with URL parameters, or if it's a non-standard uh, index page, like index 2014, for example, they're trying to set, specify a new index page for that year, and sometimes Google doesn't seem to want to canonical it. Is there any way around that, or any comment you have on that? That should actually work. So normal content, normal URLs like that should work. Where it usually clashes with our algorithms is if you have a page like example.com slash and example.com slash index.html. And if you set the canonical to slash index.html, then our systems will usually recognize that this is actually the same as the shorter URL, and we'll kind of prefer the shorter one to the longer one. If we can kind of like guess that this is essentially a crufty part of the URL that doesn't really matter, then we'll try to skip that. But uh, if you have index 2014 or something that's clearly a unique URL, or if you have URL parameters that aren't blocked like by the URL handling tool, then that's something we should be able to pick up on and say this is a fine page for Canonical. It's just called index 2014, but that's fine. And it's not. Usually, it's something also that kind of plays into this is if we can recognize that the same content is on a simpler URL, then we might choose a simpler URL. But if you have index 2014, then you're not going to have like the same content on the root, right? It's going right. to be it'll, be it'll be tailored yeah. for the new year. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. All right. Uh, if unique content is key, what kind of content should a page have in order to rank higher than Google.com for the search term Google? Um, probably needs to have really good content on Google. I mean, or be really relevant. Um, same applies to Wikipedia or Nike, etc. Is the unique content really key? 
Um, so I'm guessing if you have exactly the same content as uh, Wikipedia on your homepage and you're not Wikipedia, then that's not really going to help. Whereas if you have really great content about Wikipedia and that's recognized as being really, really relevant, then sometimes that could potentially rank higher than Wikipedia. Obviously, Wikipedia is an extreme example, and you're going to have to do something really, really unique to actually do that, but uh, I don't think that this is completely impossible. It's not that we treat these in any way special. It's essentially these sites or these kind of brands, they, they have built up their content, built up their reputation over a long time, and they've become kind of relevant for those terms. It doesn't mean that it's impossible to outrank them, but it's not trivial. John, um, regarding that question, on a different note in some respects, I just put a link in the, um, in the chat there. And uh, we've talked about sort of the UK for my business, um, but I, I'm in touch with everybody in our industry, and they've all complained about uh, results in the, uh, in the US. And there's probably only three results in that entire page that are actually really relevant. And there's a lot of repeat companies. There's, there's actually quite a lot of garbage in there as well. So it is, do you, I guess you have a, a team of people that will basically run that query through a quality and check the quality of the sites or something? Or I mean, it's, it's quite a strong keyword, and I'm very surprised the results are that bad. And I, I did send you an email a couple of weeks ago with a screen grab highlighting what was bad about that page. I'm not sure if you got it. Yeah, I, I passed that on, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, it's this is a, a, a rather general question, I mean, for, for everybody. If this is happening here, I'm sure that this is uh, a very, very widespread problem with quality that a lot of people are seeing. The results just aren't up to scratch for, for so many key terms. I'm not sure if it's because so many people are affected by Panda and Penguin and, and all that kind of stuff that the good sites are actually being uh, demoted. The same thing that we've had for four years that you know we're climbing out of that hole. But uh, it doesn't make us a bad choice for a business. And that's a really clear example of terrible results. Yeah, I, I pass that on to the team. It's tricky in the sense that we don't want to like manually curate the search results. That's not something that we, we really have the capability to do. There are not enough people in the world to kind of do that for all search results. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's, it's definitely useful to have examples where we're getting the top results wrong. We're do kind of clearly misunderstanding something here or uh, kind of promoting spam or lower quality content like that. That's always useful for the team. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, why my webmaster tools section links to my site simply says no data available. I've added HTTP and HTTPS sites. It never worked for years. Uh, there's nothing else on my page. No formatting, etc. Um, I need to know the URL that you're looking at. So in general, this happens when you have the wrong version of your site verified in Webmaster Tools. So that could be the www, non www version. It could be that you're redirecting to a newer domain. Anything like that could be the case there. So you really, what, what I do here in a case like this is do a site query. Um, take a look at the cache page for your home page and make sure that that version is the one that you have in Webmaster Tools. And then look at that version there in Webmaster Tools. Usually, it takes a few days to kind of uh, create this data if the site has never been added before. But afterwards, you should be able to see that information there. John? Can yes. I step in with a question related sure. to Webmaster Tools? I've just pasted a link in the chat. Uh, I wonder if you do some adjustments on the index status on Webmaster Tools. Because as far as you can see on that print screen, uh, without changing the robots.txt file for a website, I've dropped half of the index pages along with the block by robots.txt uh, URLs. I just want to mention that the robots.txt file didn't change, so the same blocked URLs. I mean, it should be the same uh, uh, amount. And suddenly, just dropped on the 9th of uh, this month, 
to a half of the index, also all of, almost all of the blocked URLs have been dropped. I need to take a look at that example URL. So if you can post that in there, I can I can double check as well. But uh, especially when you're looking at things in Webmaster Tools and you're looking at the last data point, then it might be that that data is just like halfway processed at the moment. And it'll kind of jump back up to the normal status uh, as soon as we've reprocessed everything there. But uh, sometimes these uh, algorithms on our side and Webmaster Tools break as well. And uh, while we do have monitoring for all of that setup so that we recognize it when, when things break or get stuck, uh, sometimes things sneak through. So uh, if you can give me some example URLs, then I, I'd love to take a look at that. Sure. I've just posted the URL f which, are, which is included. I posted it in the chat. OK, great. Thank you. I'll get back to you on Google, Google Plus. <laughs> OK. Um, how can Sorry? Hey, John, sorry. Um, I was wondering, can you take a look at uh, this URL and just give us like uh, which area uh, we might have the biggest opportunity for improvement? I think we'd have to kind of take some time to take a look at that. I think we looked at that before, but I, I want to take a little bit more time than just like five seconds to throw okay. it into something and say, this is what you've been missing out on. But uh, I, I mean, you, you've sent uh, this as well, or I think you probably send that with with the document. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? It's yeah. A side we have been always been talking about, but I wanted to broaden the question outside Panda, and yeah. uh, just in general terms, if there is uh, maybe something also non-Panda that m maybe bigger opportunity than pa than mm -hmm. what. Okay, so maybe we can handle it offline together with the survey results. Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. Um, how can one avoid adding different copies of the same site, like HTTP, HTTPS, et cetera, and just have one uh, .com, when a page uses HTTPS, and drops a leading dub, dub, dub. Unless you add all four pages, you don't see some stats. At the moment, that's something that you kind of have to live with in Webmaster Tools. I think over time, we'll have to find a solution for, for that kind of complicated UI, let's say. But uh, at the moment, if you know that you might have data for different versions of your site, I just add those versions and, and double check them as well. Uh, if you have redirect set up, then usually all of that data will just be combined in your preferred version, and you don't have to worry about the other ones. Uh, we rank number one for a search term, but it leads to a 404 page and has yet to drop out of search results. It's been several weeks. Uh, will that hurt our ranking, as people will most likely be bouncing heavily on that page? Uh, that shouldn't be a problem. I mean, this is something where our algorithms should be able to pick up on this uh, change to a 404 page. But uh, especially with 404, sometimes we recrawl them a few times to make sure that we're actually picking up the right content there. So what you could do is use a 410 instead of 404 to make this a little bit faster, a little bit stronger signal. But uh, if it's been several weeks already, then my guess is it's just a matter of a short time anyway for this page to drop out. Uh, is there anything a site can do to appear in the knowledge graph box? We rank first for many terms, but the knowledge graph uh, knowledge box pushes us down and uses information from other sites. Um, we don't have anything specific that you can put on your website to kind of rank within the knowledge graph part of things, but using uh, information like structured markup, structured data on your page to let us know about information on your page that you have there already, uh, letting us know about the link to maybe your Google Plus page if you have one, so that we can combine those signals. That's really useful for us. If you have a logo that you want included, you can mark that up. If there are opening hours on your site for your, for your business, that's something you can add there. All of that kind of helps give us more information about your business that we could show in the knowledge graph to kind of give users a little bit of a better view of your site. John, may I just ask a quick question there? Um, sure. Do you know how much is Google supporting JSON-LD? Uh, we support it, I think, just for events at the moment. So for events markup, we support it. 
I imagine it's something we'll add to the other types, but uh, we don't have anything to kind of announce there at the moment. It's, it's a bit know. tricky because it's uh, not directly visible on the page, but uh, apparently for events it makes sense for one reason or another, so that's where we started. You don't know, is it used for discovery at all? If there's URLs in JSON-LD, whether that could be used for discovery? Uh, if there are URLs in JSON-LD, I don't think we'd use that. We might if we kind of crawl the page and see it accidentally, but I'm pretty sure we'd uh, ignore that if it's just in JSON-LD. Okay, if, cool. it's, if it's something like a JavaScript on the page, where you kind of like create URLs with JavaScript, that's something where I think it makes sense to pick that up on because that's something that might be shown directly to the user. But if it's in JSON-LD, I don't think we'd uh, just pick it up from there. All right, we have a few minutes left. Um, let me open it up for you guys. What else is on your mind? Sure. John, what happened to the um, to the to the hangout with the Q and A? Because I noticed that um, it seems to be something to do with the Google Plus. And if your account isn't actually linked to a Google Plus account, then you can't view the button that allows you to select the Q and A. So, I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. I I yeah. asked around internally, but I haven't heard back uh, from that. It's certainly nothing I I've been doing on purpose here. So. Mm -hmm. Maybe these are just normal changes in Google+. Maybe my Hangouts are too spammy. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, John, can I ask you, uh, uh, actually, um, it's not really a question. It's more of a feedback regarding Webmaster Tools. Sure. Uh, so whenever you go to the like search queries section, uh, uh, the period for which you see the results is automatically selected as the previous 30 days, usually. Uh, but the data is actually until two days ago or something like that, usually. And, uh, but the period is still selected. So for example, if I go into Webmaster Tools for one of the websites now, I see from 18 of October to 17, um, so until today, basically, 17 November. But the data is actually only until 15 November. And uh, it's a bit uh, com might be a bit confusing, I guess, for some webmasters because they think they see 30 days worth of data when they actually see only 28 days worth of data. Uh, and I also think, and I've uh, tested this, um, when you uh, apply, when you choose the bottom with the uh, modifications to see to check uh, um, was the data compared to the last, the previous period. Uh, it takes into account 30 days, not 20 days, for which you have the data on. So, um, uh, for example, uh, if I choose with modifications now, it should show me uh, uh, 28 days compared to the previous 28 days, but instead it shows me 28 days compared to the previous 30 days because that's the period selected in, um, you know, in the web map. Okay. I think it would be more useful if you couldn't select, so, or if it would be automatically selected. So the, I have data until the 15th of November. If it would be automatically selected uh, until 15th of November, and I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to select 16 or 17 because there's no data. Yeah, that makes sense. That's especially when it compares to the previous period and uses a different length. That uh, always looks weird, I guess, because you're looking at uh, the last 28 days and comparing it to 30 days, so you'll always feel like your site has been going down when it might have just been kind of stable, right? Right. Yeah. Hey, um, uh, oh, OK, uh, go ahead, Josh. Thank you very much. So I put a little thing in the chat there for you to look at. I don't want to mention it out loud on the uh, Hangout. But just saying, so regarding 500 level errors, um, you guys have really improved lately. That's really great. It used to be that if a page dropped out for, due to 500 level errors, uh, it would take days to get back in. And now you guys come back every couple uh, every hour or so and try to put the page back. That's wonderful because I have a friend who uh, runs an e-commerce site, and he's getting nailed with, with these kinds of errors all the time. Um, 
It would be, but he says that it, he'll, he'll still drop a few spots in ranking. I don't know, it's not like it, it, that Google's not fully trusting that the server is working perfectly yet. It would be really great if he could come back right to where he was because it, then that would really limit the, uh, the, the money that uh, is costing him from going down a few spots. Do you know what I mean? That shouldn't be causing anything to kind of drop in rankings because, like, 500 errors, even 404 errors, when they come back, we essentially take everything just like the, like it was before. So it's not that the site loses any information or that like a high number of errors means that we kind of devalue the site in any way. It's It should essentially be coming back one-to-one. -one. So oh, okay. that's, that's not something where I'd assume that like having a bunch of 404 or 500 errors would, would cause problems. Uh, one thing you can do with a 503 in particular is say when we should recrawl that page. Kind of, I, I don't know what, uh, what the actual phrasing is, but it's something like this is a 503, and please check back after a certain number of minutes or hours or days. I see. And so you could say check back in 10 seconds or check back in 20 sure. seconds. Something yeah, like that, yeah. There really shouldn't be a, an interruption of service there in, in any way. Uh, especially it's a five, if it's a 503, then we're not going to drop that URL the first time we see it. We're going to have to see a continued 503 there so that after maybe a couple of days, if we always see a 503, then we might assume that this page is really gone. But if it, uh, if it just has like a one-time 503, then that shouldn't cause us to drop that page at all. Do you mind typing in the chat how long the time is there for how long it would take? Um, I don't know what the absolute time is. I, I'm uh, thinking... You don't have it memorized? Come on, John. <laughs> I'm thinking it's, it's something on the order of a couple of days. I know I saw one case where a webmaster was complaining that we dropped his site and it was returning 503 for a couple of months. So a couple of months, like, as an upper range, and I imagine a couple of days is more like a realistic range. But uh, somewhere in there, if you keep serving 503, then at some point we assume that this page is actually gone and that the server is just returning the wrong resolve code. Uh, that's, that's fantastic, John. I really, really appreciate that. That's going to save this person a lot of money. Thank you very much. Great. All right. Right. Just use fetch and render once the uh, website is uh, and submit it again once the website is sure. set up. You can do that too. Yeah, you can use uh, the submit to index and in Webmaster Tools to get that back as well. That's a good idea. Yeah, definitely. All right. Um, someone else needs to take this room, so I'm going to have to cut this a little bit short. Uh, thank you all for all of your questions and feedback. And uh, maybe we can join in another time with one of the future Hangouts. And hopefully the Q&A will work then, actually. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Great. Thanks, John. As Thank always, John, week. have a good week. Thanks, John. Bye.